Today we're going to talk a little bit about, it's Monday morning, give me time, we're going to talk about the Ken today. The Ken is incredible, it's another hat that we invented here at JJ Hat Center. It's essentially a custom version of a 2 inch brim. Let's say you have a Mercer, a Saxon, anything that's like a standard 2 inch Sinatra size brim, you want something a little trimmer and cool. Like you want quality, you want that, you know, super high grade felt, and you want it in, you know, beautiful designer colors like taupe with a smoky grayish brown band, or in like a, a beautiful deep burgundy wine color. We got it in burgundy this year. So we used to have a hat called the Cordoba, which was very popular. It had a welted edge. Um, we, we changed it. We got rid of the welted edge. We put on the raw edge with the whip stitch and we changed the name to the Ken. So the K-E-N is basically the trimmer two inch brim version. It's not that two and three eighths inch. It's, it's like the little black hat I wore. Uh, Sinatra, the Blues Brothers, uh, I don't know, just uh, not a wide brim, just not a short brim, a nice medium two inch brim. We're gonna talk about the Ken today and I guess I'm gonna attempt to play a little guitar for you. I noticed that I haven't been playing songs for a while so I've got my uh, 
got my phone over here with some lyrics to a Bruce Springsteen song. Uh, Springsteen is notoriously hard to sing, especially his first album, which is all kind of like, you know, Brimstone, Baritone, Rolling Stone, and, you know, this and that, and uh, Jukebox Graduate for a First Mate, and everything that he writes is a little bit like uh, tongue twistery. But um, his first album is uh, actually kind of special to me. Uh, yeah, he's from New Jersey and stuff. He's not a New Yorker, but uh, I had a good friend who was really into Springsteen when I was in high school, and I had a Spring Springsteen denim jacket painted on the back. You know, there were two two artist guys in my high school that used to paint everybody's de jean jackets. We had the back panel of everybody's jean jackets. Used to have your favorite album cover, you know, like Ozzy or The Doors or Kiss. It was me and this other guy, Brian Fingeret, and Brian was really into Springsteen. He had like really perfect album covers, and, and then I came to school one day with the Sgt. Peppers, and I had the entire Sgt. Peppers album cover on the back, and it went around and everything, and I did it in day glow paint. It was incredible. Photorealistic faces, and I had a, a girlfriend who traded that vest away like 30 years ago this happened or something. I don't know why I'm even talking about it. Should sure edit that part out, but uh, I probably won't. Well, I stood still after midnight, suspended my mask away. And I cool my hair till it's just right. Then I come in every night again. I was up in the pain and crossed by the wind. I got a crooked crutch. super duper quality and you're not going to find it anywhere else because we sort of invented it you know we had Rocher make it for us basically um, 
So there's not a lot to compare it to, but you could compare it to, I guess, other um, other custom hats by us and other two-inch brim hats, I guess, you know. Um, here, the Mercer, the Tribeca, the Seville, the Ken. Okay, the Ken and Taupe has always been a huge hat for us. It's huge, okay. It's a great hat that matches everything. You want one little classy hat that's not overdone, doesn't have a big, big brim. It's not a gray hat with a black band like Sinatra or a reporter. It's not black. It's taupe. It's not brown. Taupe is kind of like a, a beigey, grayish kind of olivey color. This will match beautifully with all the earth tones. It'll match great with your black, with your navy, with your olive, um, almost anything. So if you want to do one hat for anything, you get yourself a taupe hat. Um, a taupe seville, a taupe can, they pretty much match it all. Um, the big surprise this year, um, here's some more, let's put the brim down. The big surprise is the fact that we got it in Burgundy, which, uh, that's amazing. We did have the Cordoba once in Burgundy. Um, they make a gorgeous wine color. It's deep and like velvety. The thing about the can is that it's overlooked sometimes um, on the online thing because people, you know, when you don't see the hats in front of you, it's a little different. People tend to go for those two and three eighths, two and a half inch, you know, classic fedoras, um, kind of like, you know, the Temple, the Whippet, my green hat, the Valencia, the, uh, the Seville, all those kind of bigger for it. But the shorter ones, you got to see it to, you know, to appreciate its coolness it's kind of like yeah it's great but like once you get it on you're like wait a minute you know i could wear that it's a little bit more like understated less costume like or something more authentic in a way you know a lot of guys in the hat wearing days they wore a little shorter brims you know the big floppy brims some guys wore them but uh going a little shorter looks slightly more sometimes it could look more laid back and understated, um, subtle, less of a statement. It can look appropriate for your height and your face and stuff. Um, other times it can just look cooler, you know? You've got a sort of a narrow face, little brim, you're wearing it's tight, just the way like a pork pie looks really cool because it's so small. I'm not talking about something as small as that, I'm talking about like a two inch brim, which is small, medium, medium. You know, you get a really nice angle, you cock it, a burgundy one, it's just so smooth, you know, it's like, it's real deal. Um, it's got that real curved flange to the brim, good snap, they look great up, they look great down. And, um, you know, where are you going to get a custom hat of this quality in a deep burgundy like that, you know? Um, this is beyond, you know, there are other companies who make it, Biltmore makes burgundy, um, Salentino makes it and they're good quality but this is a little step uh, you know it's more like the the soft uh, Italian or the soft Spanish stuff uh, that you see me wearing that's kind of mushy on the top good snap it's uh, it's luxurious um, hard to explain it's it's a soft felt that you could almost shape yourself you could do uh, let me show you a kind of couple of hats here you know, like some felt is, it'll sort of hold the shape, you know what I mean? It's soft in, in the sense that it's soft, but you could, you could do things with it, you know? And it kind of will, will hold. That's, that's what I like. I like hats that are, you know, comfortable, light, and soft, but not too, I don't know. I like hats that are soft that you can control, you know? that stay in shape and stuff like that. And I mean, a lot of times they tend to be hard to find, vintage hats, older hats, and, and expensive. But that's that's just sort of my taste. Um, I'm very sensitive to having heavy stuff on my head, which is why I don't wear a lot of Westerns. Uh, if you notice, I always wear a t-shirt, a lightweight cotton short sleeve t-shirt, whether it's winter or summer, it doesn't matter. I'm uh, sort of dead like that. I'm sensitive to heavy stuff, to hot stuff. Uh, I don't like to, you know, sweat too much at work when I'm running up and down those stairs. Oh, I got to go up again. You know, I get winded. I start sweating in the hat. So I take my linings out of my hat, 
to, and uh, I generally go for dress weight stuff, not western weight hats. Uh, this is one of the few. I actually did a trade for this one when a friend of mine uh, left JJ's. I traded him a couple of my favorite hats uh, for this one. But uh, the can, yeah. The can is like the Seville. It's got the raw edge with a whip stitch. Okay. Um, it uh, used to be called the Cordoba, we did very well with it, but I think uh, we would have done much better with it without the welted edge. So we killed the welted edge on the Cordoba. You can now find that hat in the clearance section. It's the exact same hat as the Ken, exactly the same. It's just last year's version were with a, uh, a welted edge. It's when the edge is folded over and, uh, and, and stitched down, or folded under and stitched down. It's an underwelt or an overwelt. So it's like a hemmed edge. It's like the light felt tab. It actually, that's one of the few types of edge treatments to a brim that will make a little difference. Um, my two uh, old hats that I have that have welted edges seem to last a little longer than all my other ones. Um, they're way older than my green hats and they still look good and I roll them you know, so many times. I, I don't know if it's true or not, but I have a feeling that a welted edge can give a little more stability to the brim. I don't believe that for any other type of, uh, you know, like bound edges, they might, uh, you know, a little bit, maybe, you know, they might disguise it a little bit, I think, but, uh, and they'll disguise certain, like, fingerprints and stuff, if it's like a light-colored hat, you know, you don't get, like, a, a dirty edge or a dusty edge, but, now nah, I don't think the edge has much to do with the strength or stability of a brim, it's more how thick the hat is, how much stiffener is on there, and how well it was made, and blah. How good the felt is, how thick the felt is, how dense, how much stiffener is sprayed on the, the brim itself, you know. It's things like that, to me, more that will affect uh, the way a brim behaves. I, I've seen, you know, brims curl up with uh, bound edges, too, you know. It's generally just because they're really thin. That's what it is, you know, almost always. So you, they make the same good felt, and then they start making them thinner and thinner and thinner, and then one year they start curling. They're like, oh, you went a little too far. So um, that's the deal. Better felt, more felt, more of it. Thick felt. So you got a raw edge. You look at the side of it, and you can see, like, you know, like a good amount of felt. You know, like, you see the side of this raw edge? Hard to focus on, but you know, when you could actually see the side and the thickness of it, you know, you've got some good thick felt there. And it's so thin, it's like you could barely even see it. Okay, here's a raw edge, but it's, it's thinner, but you can still see it. I'm definitely getting some curling here, too. You could notice, you see it. There we go. And that was actually done on purpose. I think I was trying to do some kind of weird gambler thing or something at some point. This was, I was just playing with it. But, uh, yeah, you don't want to felt that's too, too thin. Then you, you can't start doing crazy, um, like, modifications with them and stuff. They won't hold every shape. Like, a, a flat brim has to be thick felt and super stiff. So this hat will be all right if I gave it more stiffener. I'd have to stiffen the heck out of it. It's not meant to be a flat brim. It's meant to be a, a flanged brim, you know, a snap brim. So I'm trying to sort of do something that it's not boring to do. But uh, my point is, yeah, uh, the, the edge treatment, nah, it's not going to have much effect on it. It's more like the felt itself of the hat, you know. That's what uh, sets a a price for a hat is how much felt they use, the quality of it and stuff, you know. People don't realize that, but you could make, like, let's say you make this particular hat with, and this is just an arbitrary number, like 4.5 ounces of felt, okay? If you took the same hat and you made it with 2.7 ounces, like, you know, you cut it pretty much in half, nobody would really know. They'd be like, okay, oh, the hats feel lighter this year. Mm, nice. Maybe. Most likely they won't remember the weight of their hat, you know, because their hat is probably 15 years old or something like that. And, you know, so, you know, and, and how many people buy the same hat twice, you know? So, yeah, 
Hats can get thinner, 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 and nobody notices. It's a very easy way to skimp on price. And that's what sets the price of your whole hat. It's the difference between a hat costing you $3 for the felt or costing you $30 for the felt. Um, or costing you, you know, $100 for the felt. Um, there's a big markup on felt um, because basically there's so much work to do. There's a lot of sanding and processing and buffing and stretching and wetting and cooking and sewing and clipping and so many things to make a hat. And uh, there's so many people to get paid, so many workers and shippers and truckers and designers and salesmen and executives and advertisers and just so many people and rent and overhead and it gets crazy so maybe if you actually spent thirty dollars for a piece of beaver felt when it comes time to sell it that guy might have to sell that thirty dollar piece of beaver felt for a hundred and ninety dollars and then it gets to the store and the the store has to make a profit. He's got his employees and overhead and rent and heat and advertising and all those things. So he's got to sell it uh, for you know, one hundred ninety dollars wholesale for whatever three hundred and fifty or something. Another arbitrary number. We're just making these numbers up. So by the time you get the hat, yeah, it's three fifty. But you know the felt itself costs thirty dollars. It's mostly the work that goes into these hats. But uh, when it comes time to trim corners and you got to save some money somewhere what are you going to do you going to start firing people that's rough right people have families there's unions what are you going to do you're going to make the sweatband plastic no you can't do that that's the first giveaway of a cheap hat oh my god you get to make your um, manufacturing over in asia maybe save a lot if maybe they make this hat over in let's say Pakistan or India or um, anywhere Indonesia or something no you can't do that right? people are not going to buy a $350 hat if it's made in Pakistan they just they won't you know, or China or whatever um, so where do you skimp it gets hard right so that's what they do they start skimping on materials you know they use cheaper leather use thinner felt, they go thinner and thinner and thinner, and eventually the hats don't perform, but they feel good, they look good, and people still love them, but they don't perform as well. And so this is very, very, very common. This is kind of like some whistleblower type of stuff. So the next video, if you see, like, I'm gone, you know, it means that, like, the black car showed up, and John B. Stetson came out with his big uh, handlebar mustache and 10-gallon hat, and, you know, just pushes a button and I'm gone. That's, that's how powerful John B. is. He's, he's the most powerful man in the world as far as hats go, so you don't mess with him. So this is whistleblower kind of stuff, like, you know, you know it's like that. So anyway, I just wanted to say that Ken is it's a really underrated hat. Um, if you're doing two-inch brims or if you want to do something a little understated, you know, the Trilby kind of thing, a shorter brim. The Ashram is very, very small and neat, but for some people it's too small. It's one and three quarter inch brim. This is a two, two inch brim with a Italian, classic Italian style. Um, same crown as my green hat. It's got that classical crown, uh, low, neat, Italian looking, um, but it's a two inch brim. Uh, I think it's awesome. I would definitely take a look at some of the colors, the taupe, the gray, uh, Burgundy, wow, that's going to sell out really, really fast. So if you have a burgundy in mind, uh, don't wait on that. It's definitely going to go. And they're custom, so we can't just get more of them really fast. Um, we have to order those like a half a year in advance. So you have been, been pre-warned. Uh, when they sell out, that's that's it. You know, I'm sure we have some upstairs now, but who knows how long they're going to last.
Thank you.